Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Winston Churchill said, An appeaser is one who feeds a crocodile, hoping it will eat him last. And unfortunately, we have a lot of politicians who are feeding the crocodile. Ten years ago, Texas was having a very hot summer. Texas climate academics took advantage of the hot weather to do some pretty serious fear-mongering. They said, get used to it. The weather of the 21st century will be very much like the hot and dry weather of 2011. Giving extra credibility to this forecast is the fact that the weather extremes we are presently experiencing were first predicted in 1995. Let's take a look now and see what's happened since they made this forecast 10 years ago. Texas has gotten wetter over the last 120 years, and the past five years have been the wettest five-year period on record. And as far as temperatures go, the hottest year in Texas occurred 100 years ago in 1921, and Texas afternoon temperatures have been generally declining over the past century. Ten years ago was a very hot year, but temperatures since then have declined quite a bit. Academics predicted hot and dry weather, but instead Texas has had their wettest years on record. Now let's take a look at something Barack Obama said eight years ago in 2013. He said, 97% of scientists agree climate change is real, man-made, and dangerous. He provided a link as evidence, but that link goes to here. I don't find this picture of some girl meditating as being very convincing evidence of a climate crisis. A few months after Barack Obama made that claim in 2013, the American Meteorological Society took a survey of their professional members. What that survey found was that only 52% of their professional members believed that global warming was mostly caused by humans. They weren't asked whether man-made global warming was dangerous, but had they been asked that, the number responding yes would have undoubtedly been below 50%. Barack Obama made this number up as a way to scare people and thus push a political agenda. Then a few weeks later he said he didn't have time to meet with anyone who didn't go along with his lies and he called them members of the Flat Earth Society. Many politicians lie and Democratic politicians are particularly proficient at it. But unfortunately a lot of Republicans have gone along with this scam as well. Texas built a huge number of windmills, and on February 12th of this year, USA Today was bragging that wind power produced up to two-thirds of Texas energy. But two days later, Texas got very cold, the wind wasn't blowing, and the wind turbines froze up. The supply of energy in Texas became almost completely dependent on natural gas. But unfortunately, Texas had been so focused on building windmills, they hadn't taken care of their natural gas infrastructure. So some of their natural gas pipelines got shut down in the cold, the state had massive blackouts, and many people froze to death. Texas had very bad cold snaps in the past, like in 1989, but people weren't freezing to death. That was because 30 years ago, the Texas government understood that they needed to maintain a supply of reliable energy. But unfortunately, the Texas government listened to the academics rather than focusing on actual science. Academics told the state government that Texas was going to be hot and dry. They didn't say it was going to be record cold. On February 12th, USA Today was bragging about Texas wind power, and 10 days later they were apologizing for it. They said, over a decade of misguided green energy policies are wreaking havoc in Texas and the lower Midwest right now, despite nonstop claims to the contrary. Texas was feeding the global warming scamsters crocodile, and they got bit pretty hard as a result. Now let's take a look at what's going on where I live in Wyoming. On Valentine's Day, like in Texas, the wind farms in Wyoming were shut down because of ice and because of a lack of wind. And the solar panels were covered with snow. So people who rely on Wyoming power for their survival were completely dependent on coal and natural gas. And the Wyoming governor took a different approach to feeding the crocodile. He said he was going to make the state carbon negative by taking carbon dioxide out of the smokestacks and pumping it down into the ground. He correctly stated that Biden energy policies resemble science fiction, but he proposed some useless policies of his own. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to continue to increase at an accelerating rate, regardless of any virtue signaling by American politicians. Nothing that Biden or any other politician is doing will have any meaningful impact on this curve. 
but reality and government seem to have nothing to do with each other in the year 2021. And last week, the governor of Wyoming announced that he's entering a partnership with Bill Gates. They're going to shut down one of the state's four coal-fired power plants and replace it with a next-generation nuclear reactor. If you don't think about it too closely, this sounds like it might be a good idea. This power plant might produce a lot of electricity. But on the other hand, it might not. It's an experiment, not an existing technology. Until it's actually been in operation for a few years and has been shown to be safe and reliable, we don't actually know that it's a viable technology. Forty years ago, I was working on nuclear waste disposal for the U.S. government, and there's a lot of issues which still haven't been resolved. It's great that the governor is trying out a new technology, but why did he agree to shut down one of the state's four existing coal-fired power plants? There was no scientific or technological reason to link Bill Gates' experimental reactor with shutting down an existing power plant. What the governor is doing is feeding the crocodile, and he's feeding Bill Gates' bank account. If our government was thinking clearly, we wouldn't be throwing out essential, reliable, existing technology. If Bill Gates' new technology turns out to have a lot of issues, then the state of Wyoming has a huge problem as a result of the governor's decisions. The governor has made some dangerous and useless decisions based on politics. 35 years ago, the space shuttle Challenger blew up over Florida. When it became obvious that NASA was lying and covering something up, President Reagan appointed a commission to find out what actually happened. Dr. Richard Feynman was on that commission and he figured out exactly what NASA did wrong and what they were covering up. In his report, he said, For a successful technology, reality must take precedence over public relations, for nature cannot be fooled. But unfortunately, our policy in the year 2021 is being driven by public relations rather than reality. And when government ignores reality, very bad things happen. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this insanity for the past 13 years. You can visit him in Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.